Welcome to Adjusted Reality, a podcast series trusted by the adjusted and brought to you by the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress, where we learn from athletes, celebrities, influencers, and healthcare professionals about how to optimize health in a fun, relatable way. Join me, Dr. Sherry McAllister, as I speak with Dr. Heidi Havoc about the connection between the spine and muscle function. We are thrilled to bring back Dr. Heidi Havoc this season. And if you missed her episodes on how to train the brain out of pain, be sure to click the link in the show notes below to tune in. Now, Dr. Heidi Havoc is the Director of Research at the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. She is a chiropractor and she has her PhD in Human Neurophysiology from the University of Auckland. She is the author of the best-selling book, The Reality Check, A Quest to Understand Chiropractic from the Inside Out. This book actually describes the easy, understandable language of what really happens in the brain when a chiropractor adjusts the spine. Dr. Havoc also runs a company with the mission of enlightening the world about the science of chiropractic, which you can learn more about at therealitycheck.com. Welcome to the show, Dr. Havoc. How are you this morning? Thank you, Sherry. I'm I'm really good. (laughs) I just love talking to you. So anytime. This is wonderful. We have a brand new idea of how to educate our communities not just what we talked about last time about pain, but now we're gonna talk about something really special, which is function. So let's start with muscle function. Can you break down for this audience and simply put, how does it work? (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, we don't necessarily often think about how we move and what's actually happening when we move. And if you break it down into really simple terms, muscles are really supposed to bring together bones so that you to create movement. So a muscle is supposed to contract. Sometimes we want those muscles to contract synchronistically, uh, depending on what you're doing. So for example, if you're bending your elbow, then you're contracting your biceps while your triceps relaxes. So that's got to, they've both got to move in a synchronistic fashion to allow for that movement. And then sometimes you want to stiffen them up. Say, for example, you wanted to hold a bag of shopping. Then you actually need to contract and stiffen your arm up. And so they're all contracting at the same time. And this is exactly the same thing with the spine, which we think much less of. (laughs) But again, we've got multiple bones in our spine. And sometimes they're meant to synchronistically move so that you get, you dissipate the forces. For example, when you're out running, you want your spinal bones to move in a synchronistic fashion. But other times, again, if you're lifting a heavy load, you actually want your spinal bones to all stiffen up at the same time to protect your back so that you don't get forces in certain parts of the the spine that can injure the spine. So in real simple terms, we want our muscles to contract either synchronistically with each other to allow for movement or to stiffen up to protect or or, um, to hold a certain part of the body still. Excellent. Excellent. This is, this is really important because we think oftentimes about the spine being completely separate from the muscles. So perhaps there's kind of like a chicken and an egg theory here is do the muscles stiffen and then the, the spine straighten or does the spine straighten and the muscle stiffen? So let, let's just, let's just work this out together. So what does the spine have to do with the process? For example, when you just talk about moving the arm, let's talk about heavy weightlifting and the, so we're, we're going to want to stiffen that spine, as you just said. So the muscles are contracting. Can you walk the consumer through when those muscles contract? How does it impact the spine? Well, first and foremost, we've got to keep in mind that the muscles don't move themselves, right? They're, they get signals through the nervous system. It's actually the brain that controls all of your movements. So this is this is an important, important thing because your brain will first decide that you're going to make a movement. So you have that initial thought of a movement. It's actually ridiculously complicated if you look into the neurophysiology of a simple contraction. So the brain first has a thought, okay, I'm going to move my arm. 
And then when it thinks that thought, it does three things at the same time. One, it sends the messages through to the appropriate muscles to move exactly as they should. But at the same time, to get the arm to move, at the same time, it does two other things. Number one, it predicts what it expects it's going to feel as you do the movement. Say, say, for example, before we do the spine thing, I'll just do an arm. You were just bending over to pick up a pen. So you're literally reaching your arm out. So you send the messages to your arm muscles to reach out to pick up the pen. But your brain has also got a, an image in its mind, in literally in your mind, What's going to happen as I reach? So I'm going to feel the stretch of my muscles. I'm going to feel the clothes move against my arm. I'm going to feel, you know, air movement of my arm as I'm moving the arm. And then I'm going to feel the pen and then I'm going to feel the weight of it. And then I'm going to lift it. And, and, and it actually coordinates with your movements as you do it so that you do it perfectly so that you don't miss the pen. Um, and another thing it does all at the same time, and this is so it does three things. The third thing is it contracts your core muscles so that you don't fall over when you lift your arm out. It does exactly the same thing when you lift a leg. It contracts the core muscles on the opposite side of the body so that you don't fall over. And this is exactly where the spine comes into it. Because for the brain to know where the arm is and where it's going to move it, it moves it according to where it attaches. And of course, where does it attach? your arm attaches onto your torso, which attaches to your spine. So every movement that you do in your body is actually done in relation to where the core of your body is. And this is when it gets really interesting because what we're understanding is that the way your spine moves and functions actually influences how your brain contracts arm and leg muscles. Fascinating. Okay. I want you to just back up right there. So what you just said is if your spine is connecting to back to the brain and then talking to how the muscles around it function. And I think our audience needs to kind of see, because we often forget that the brain is in charge of this masterful machine because our bodies are so, you know, automatic. We just yeah. um, immediately just fluid through. We rarely ever think about, oh, I have to move my leg and yeah. what, what really is engaged in moving um, the leg. And so one of the pieces is if the spine is not functioning, and we know this alters the brain's kind of mapping. Tell us how this relates back to our ability to just carry out activities of daily living. Well, that's what's so fascinating because what we're understanding through 20 years of research studies is that the way the spine works influences how the brain perceives what's going on, not just of what's going on in the spine itself, but it actually influences how your brain is aware of arms and legs. It even goes so far as to influence how you interpret sound and visual information. So we know from studies that if your spine isn't working in an optimal way, it can actually worsen the accuracy with which you perceive sound and visual information. So what you see and hear, as well as what you feel inside your body. So where your arms and legs are. And when these dysfunctional parts of the spine are adjusted, we can improve things like the brain's accuracy of knowing where your arm is, where your leg, legs are, and, and also the way you can interpret sound and visual information, which obviously when you think about that in daily living, well, <laughs> you need to accurately interpret what's going on inside you and around you to actually function and move throughout daily life. One of the things that um, chiropractic patients will notice when they need to go and get adjusted again is they start to get a little bit clumsy, like they might stub their toe or they might knock their doors in, in, in door frames, their elbows in door frames, or they might get catch their head in the car door. And this is a sign that their map of their brain's awareness of where their body is, according to the door frame and the ground and the, and the car, isn't accurate. And that's part of that accurate movement. We also know that when your spine isn't functioning very well, that your brain can't efficiently produce force and your muscles get more fatigued. So that's another very interesting aspect. And I'm not talking about spinal muscles here. So I'm talking when your spine isn't functioning well, your leg muscles are not as efficient at producing force because, again, they don't 
activate themselves. Like the, there is that interplay again. The brain sends the messages to your muscles to contract while it's also stabilizing you, while it's also coordinating with what it expects to feel, with what it is feeling. And this process isn't as efficient when your spine's not working very well. And we've even done this, Sherry, in three different groups of people. So we've specifically studied this in college students, in elite elite taekwondo athletes, athletes, Olympic athletes, as well as even stroke victims or stroke survivors who've had a stroke and are still left with dysfunction in their leg muscle. And what we find when we adjust them is that we can, in a single adjustment session, so we check the spine for where it's dysfunctional and adjust the segments that are not functioning well, we can increase the efficiency with which the brain can produce force in those leg muscles. They literally get stronger much more so in the stroke victims compared to the college students, compared to the elite Olympic athletes. But even the elite Olympic athletes got 8% stronger on average. And imagine 8% if you're an Olympic athlete. I mean, that's it's just amazing. phenomenal. It really is. And, you know, the, the one thing that I noticed as we were talking to Olympic athletes last year doing the Tokyo Olympics is that the athletes love their chiropractors they because love chiropractic. they see the machine that they're 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 working at this peak level of performance and you're right is is any advantage to yeah. maximizing this incredible machine is impressive. I, I often think back, um, Dr. Heidi, you may not be familiar with, but there was a, a very well-known celebrity in the United States, and his name was, was Jack LaLanne. It was actually Dr. Jack LaLanne, and he often treated the, the celebrities and brought them their physical uh, education plan so they could look good on, on film. And most people did not know he was a chiropractor wow. and, uh, he, he passed late in his eighties, but he was massively fit. So Dr. Jack yeah. Lane, many of our audience will, will remember him. He did lots of stunts like swimming the channel with three boats connected to him at, in his seventies. I mean, he was massively, uh, physically fit, but one of the things that he said, and this was, you know, in the 1960s was yeah. you're only as old as your spine. Yeah. That spine so influences your flexibility, your strength, your brain's awareness of what's going on inside your body and the world around you and how you navigate that. It's even showing up to influence literally who you are as a human being. So he was spot on. And, you know, I'm talking as a neuroscientist with 20 years of research experience. He's talking as a clinician, you yeah. know, and just a visionary, see, being able to see what actually happens. So we have athletes, they get the professional ones get the optimization, but there's yeah. a large audience of athletes that we have. Let me ask you this. If you were to give them some tips um, that you have in terms of muscle function as it relates to the spine, what would you tell them as they're starting? To, some of them are just beginning workout programs. Some of them are super fit. Like we, we had at, as a digested reality guest, um, the fittest man in the world, and he was <laughs> outstanding. He fully appreciated chiropractic and some of our NFL players that have also been on adjusted reality. They, they get it. Cause you know, having been hit several times on the football field, Ooh. it's real. And that, that causes, you know, the, the, um, impetus for spinal dysfunction. What would you tell them in terms of muscle function as it relates to the spine, some things they can do to, to really pick that up? Well, they're, they're aware of chiropractic care because they're such they're so in tune with their own body. So, I mean, number one, I would say, you know, get checked and adjusted on a regular basis. Um, two, I think it's very, very important they get enough protein. A lot of people don't get enough protein in their diet. Rest is also very important. A lot of people overdo the exercise and don't necessarily get um, enough enough rest either. But that, that would be the keys. Yeah. Those are great tips for those that are listening that are working out really hard. You cannot miss sleep. It, you can't fake it. I mean, no. <laughs> Dr. Heidi and I will also say that sleep is an essence for both of us. So recognize that if you want to perform at peak, those three tips are really, really 
are incredible. Um, I want to give a shout out to you because I think it's really important. At this time last year, you did publish a wonderful study. It was the contemporary model. Now stay with me, audience, the contemporary model of vertebral column joint dysfunction and impact of high velocity, low amplitude control vertebral thrust on neuromuscular function. Now I may have lost a few of you, but this is a really bright audience. So, but the, the key and the impetus of that is really what does the adjustment do to the spine and how does it technically change the way the body is relating to its parts? Is that kind of the essence for our audience? Yes, we break down in that article. We talk about, you know, again, we even start with what is muscle function? What what do we really want? And how does the brain under normal healthy conditions control muscle function? And how could, say, adjusting the spine, like chiropractic adjustments of the spine, how could that influence muscle function? So we talk about, well, it could be influenced from the neuromuscular junction itself or actually in the muscle contractions, or it could, could come from the spinal cord level. You know, there's still a lot of people that think that an adjustment influences the nervous system at the spinal level. And it may to some degree, but what all the research indicates is that we are changing the way the brain sends its messages to your muscles, and it does it in a more efficient way and prevents fatigue. So we know that, you know, during strong contractions, repeated strong contractions, muscles can fatigue. But when you get adjusted, not only do you not see that fatigue, but the muscles are stronger. So there's there's something about keeping your spine in optimal function. And I actually think with all the work that we've done, that what a chiropractor really is doing is exercising your spine back into proper function. Because there are these parts of the spine that get turned off or switched off where the little muscles under fight and flight or during an injury will literally stop sending messages to the brain. And that means the brain doesn't know what's going on at that part of the spine and therefore starts to guess. And you get these micro traumas at that area. So then you might start after a little while to get some aches and pains, a bit of stiffness. But what's really happening is those little muscles that cross individual bones in the, in the vertebral column and the spine, they start to atrophy. They start to change. They become fibrotic and stiff. There's fatty deposits in them. And we know this is not healthy for those spinal segments. And it becomes harder and harder for that part of the spine to tell the brain what's going on. And this is where this vicious cycle sets in. So what a chiropractor is doing physiologically is exercising those stuck segments. It's one of the reasons you can't adjust yourself because what you really do is you, you basically click the joints that are already compensating for the ones that are really turned off. That's why, and you know, I wish too, I could adjust myself, but I can't. <laughs> so, you know, you have to go and see a chiropractor that can feel where these parts of the spine are completely dysfunctional, apply that thrust. It's a, you know, gentle, well, it's a very short, fast thrust. It stimulates or stretches those little muscles that are completely not working properly. But the beauty of it, not only does that help your brain control the movement of your spine, but it helps control the movements of your arms and legs. It helps your brain to be aware of your body. So you are less prone to then having an accident or being clumsy. And then, you know, we could take it to the next level, which we've talked about how, how this influences pain, but not only pain, but well-being, um, again, emotional control, you know, you, you name it. We know we're affecting parts of the brain that influence pretty much every other part of the body. And that's why people under chiropractic care, you know, may end up with all sorts of positive responses, even though you can't upfront promise them that we can fix anything other than exercising your spine back into function and allowing your brain its optimal go at whatever you're going through. It's so important because as you were just talking about the um, miss function and how as we age we naturally start to lose our balance and a lot of our yeah. listeners are not going to to even know that um it's a natural process it's it's much like you know oftentimes when we age we start um changing our hair to gray and that really then becomes as we know if if you're an aging adult out there and listening today if if it's a natural process how do we slow it down and how do we in, in part 
make it function at a better level. And when you said, you know, more clumsy, well, that does work well for an athlete who's wanting to be at the micro level of performance, but it also is a macro level for someone who is not feeling as strong in their balance and, and mm. how that balance impacts. Can you, can you just discuss a little bit yep. about balance and how the dysfunction can really lead to that fumbling? Well, it's really interesting when it comes to balance because there's three things that go into balance. One is our visual system. So, but often again, when we age, our, our visual system also starts to fail a little bit. Proprioception, and I'll come back to that in a minute, is, is bit number two. And bit number three is the inner ear, the balance system in the inner ear, so that your, your barometer of knowing you're upright. It's, it's like the iPhone, you know, when you swap your iPhone around it, it, it follows you. It's that kind of inner ear sense that we all have. You can't do anything about the inner ear. You can correct your vision with glasses, but most people forget that they can actually improve their proprioception. And what proprioception is, it's your brain's awareness of what's going on in your body. And guess where it gets that information from? The biggest source is your muscles. And guess what? <laughs> your spinal muscles are actually extremely important for your proprioception and your balance. A good colleague of mine did his whole PhD in older adults, looking at older adults at risk for falls and looking at could we improve proprioception and ability to take a fast compensatory step uh, and also the actual physical quality of life because even muscle strength comes into, you know, balance and being able to take a fast compensatory step to stop yourself from falling. And it's really fascinating. This is where we discovered that adjusting older adults, these were all over 65-year-olds that were living at home um, in Auckland, in New Zealand, that over three months of chiropractic care, their, their ability to know more accurately what was going on in their ankles was very much improved. We also found out that their, their um, physical quality of life improved. So they felt better able to to manage themselves. So I thought that was really interesting. And they also were able to take a faster compensatory step, but that didn't show up until after four weeks. But at 12 weeks, at four weeks, there was no difference in that ability to take a faster step. But at 12 weeks, there was a dramatic ability to take a faster step. So it's almost like the changes within the nervous system that happen through chiropractic care needed more than four weeks of chiropractic care before those benefits. And I think it's because it's quite a complex thing to, to know you need to take a fast step, to choose which leg to move, and then to move it. That's, that's quite complicated. Just being aware of your ankles, that showed up immediately. So at the, the first time we remeasured them at four weeks, their ability to know more, and no, no chiropractor touched anybody's ankles. They were only checking and adjusting the spine where they found these dysfunctional segments. So as they're exercising the spine to work better, the brain becomes better aware of what's going on in the ankles. We've done other studies showing we improve awareness of arms. We know from many other studies, again, that the brain is more efficiently able to produce muscle force, especially in the legs. But after that 12 weeks of care, they could take a much faster step, like much better than six months of exercise programs that they're literally trying to help older adults take these faster steps. Here's three months of chiropractic care far out, <laughs> getting, giving far better results for these older adults at home. So very interesting, this connection or why the spine is so important. And if you are an older adult and you would like to keep your, your function, your, your activities of daily living and prevent them from getting worse and worse as you age, there's a couple of studies that show chiropractic care does that for you. doesn't necessarily show that you get a lot better, but it prevents the decline that if you don't see a chiropractor, you have, you naturally have this decline as you age. So I know some very interesting connections there, Sherry, that I'm hoping that we can look more into with with more research dollars in the future. <laughs> it's fascinating and, and so really, truly important because when you think of all of uh, uh, all of us, we're, we're going into our future with now knowledge that the natural functions can actually be slowed down. And yeah. what's more important when you are starting to lose your balance and all of us have had these moments where you trip over something and it's that ability to react and yeah. activate and create a safer 
fall or a safer catch or a quicker opportunity to regain your balance. And that's incredibly important when you think of all the adverse events and people that end oh, up in the ER. With, falls are devastating. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so as you noted, especially when it comes to balance and the three systems that are in place and really retraining um, some of those um, muscles that that really haven't been turned on for a while as chiropractic comes in, we start getting things moving. And I thought it was very interesting that it, um, it started showing up after four weeks and it does seem like a complicated uh, precision. And I think having the quality of life that we all want, we all need to be able to handle the stress of daily life, be able to be physically active. Let's just stop for a moment and, and give our listeners an ability to achieve optimal muscle function. As you just noted, if you could kind of walk them through, maybe we we'll, we like to always give our, our audience some homework. So what would be the homework or the tips that you could give them to, to really maximally achieve their activities of daily living, or maybe as we talked about with those athletes, just a, a, a faster response time. What are some of the things that you would recommend? I know we talked about the athlete and sleep and protein and, and whatnot, but now just, just to have a optimal life where we understand where the brain is and how the spine interacts, what would you give them to work on and, and be able to maximize? What I'd, what I'd highly recommend, there's a, there's a couple of more things that I, I'd highly recommend. One is if you don't already have like a Fitbit or, or, or some kind of a, an iWatch or some sort of a little device, you can get them really cheaply. And just even if you're measuring your steps and, and create a little challenge for yourself, because that's we all know that, right? Exercise, you have to exercise. You just have to. And if you can set yourself a little challenge, so that you're doing a little bit more than what you're doing now. Don't don't set ridiculous challenges because you'll you'll fail, right? <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> set yourself a little first. Just measure measure how many steps you do, and then you know measure for a week, and then set yourself a little challenge. Okay, I'm going to do twenty percent more. I can do that. It's not that hard, and then you can follow it during the day. So I think that's really important, and body awareness number two is extremely important. And I think that's why chiropractic is so amazing because it brings both, remember, brain awareness and more efficient force. So it's kind of doing both the awareness piece and the increasing the force piece. Like we've got studies showing the changes in the nervous system from a single chiropractic adjustment is equivalent to the changes in the nervous system from three weeks of strength training. Wow. Okay. That's that's impressive. That's That's really impressive. Yeah. So so give yourself the gift of getting adjusted regularly. Give yourself that gift. You know, that is so important. Get adjusted, push yourself a little bit with your exercise and make sure that you are doing something. And I mean, like some Tai Chi or some meditation to connect with your own body. You know, we take it again for granted, but we're so busy in our lives that a lot of this has been shown in studies. Again, both exercise, Tai Chi programs, they actually help older adults with, that are that are at risk of falling. But I'd say if you do those three things, you, you work on connecting to yourself through meditation, through Tai Chi, through something, um, Qigong, there's some wonderful different exercises that you can do through challenging yourself a little bit with exercising and give yourself the gift of getting that adjustment, which has an impact on your nervous system equivalent of three weeks of strength training. <laughs> that that to me would be the yeah take home message i think it's fantastic that you were able to kind of put it all together and the why the why is so important why do i want to do it because your future depends on your body's ability to connect with all its parts and oh, yeah. that's that's really the key Dr. Heidi, you always have been a fabulous guest. I know our audience loves you. Thank you so much for coming back and really sharing more about how our body works as a total unit and that it is not 
um, a piece where our one segment of our spine is separate and distinct is that this is a functional complex system. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I want to thank you for tuning in to Adjusted Reality. As we spoke to Dr. Heidi Havoc about the connection between the spine and muscle function, ways to optimize your muscle function and how it relates to your overall wellness. Can you increase your movement by 20%? Did you get adjusted recently? How are you engaging your brain with your body? Like Dr. Havik said, meditation, Qigong, Tai Chi, and so much more can do that. As we noted, you're only as healthy as your spine. This podcast was brought to you by the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. As a special gift for listening today, visit f4cp.org slash health to get a copy of our Mind, Body, Spirit ebook, which focuses on many ways to optimize your health and the ones you love without the use of drugs or surgery. Don't forget to subscribe, share the podcast with family and friends, rate and review. If you're feeling inspired to learn more about chiropractic or find a doctor of chiropractic near you, visit f4cp.org slash find a doctor. We appreciate your support and look forward to checking in with you again soon. Mm-hmm.